Hi, how are you doing? I'm perfectly fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, to meet you, really for the second time, as we have uh, bumped into each yes. other at a Phantoms event. Yes, definitely. You, and, and again, thank you very much for the compliments on my artwork at the time. Oh, not a problem. I mean... It goes without saying, I can see one of my favourites to the side there, um, and it's absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal the detail in it. Which one? Which one? Oh, that'd be the Capaldi one for Jack. Ah. Heaven sent all the way for me. Yeah, I thought I'd have something out just, uh, well, uh, if, to anyone who's not, who's watching this and uh, doesn't know what type of artwork I, what, what I'm responsible for, should I say, uh, I draw an awful lot and this is the sort of stuff you would expect from me really and if uh, anyone at home has not immediately followed him after hearing that or seeing that the wrong incorrect opinion <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I mean, not, I'm not asking you to follow me in any case if you want to go ahead but if you don't then that's fair enough well i highly recommend it personally so uh, um straight away a fairly Straightforward question. How did you get started doing art? Well, it kind of all started towards the end of my last year of sick form, which was, for the record, is in 2014. So I, I re, I'd I, been studying art, really, in both GCC and in my A-levels, and I really hadn't thought of a particular route that I wanted to go down, really, because um, I was doing all sorts of different bits of artwork. And on in April of 2014, uh. 10th, 10th Planet Events, which unfortunately is, it, it, which was a signing company that is no longer with us, unfortunately, uh, they were holding an event in Barking, and one of the guests they had was Colin Baker. So my mum said to me for the event, um, Connor, why don't you go ahead and draw a picture of um, Colin Baker? Because he, he might like it. I was like, okay. And in about four hours, I did a very quick black and white picture of Colin Baker, which I've got right here, actually. Convenient. Which is this one right oh, here? Oh, yeah, just a very quick, just sort of smacking it out. Yeah, four hours, yeah. gosh, done. <laughs> it, was, it was four hours. I timed it. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> but, yeah. but, yeah, and pretty much ever since then, um, I've, been, I've, been doing, um, I've been doing that sort of thing from then on. And to further expand on why on on this type of artwork as to why I do what I do, um, I remember watching. Uh, for the record, before I go ahead and say, go ahead and say anything that anything that might offend anyone, I I absolutely respect any and all type form types of artwork. But this is just from my personal perspective. Um, I remember watching a you know those time lapse videos where you see speed runs of. Um, of, of, of where, where you start on a picture and then what the final product would end up looking yeah. like. So I saw that and there was a gentleman, I can't remember what the name of the channel is, but he used multiple tools he did. So it was watercolor, pencil, oil paint, airbrush, all sorts of stuff like that. And what he came up with this absolutely beautiful picture, believe it or not, I believe it was just a Nutella, believe it or not. And I saw that, I thought to myself, I. I love, love what he's doing, but is it not possible to draw that, just draw something like that, but just by using one medium? So uh, so I said, I resolved myself to thinking, yes, I'm pretty sure you can. And so I've essentially done this primarily out of, out of where, where I started from um, in terms of... Uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, what uh, under circumstances me me going going to meet Colin Baker, but also out of also m partly out of stubbornness, really. So it's kind of like a, you've set yourself a challenge. Yeah, I've been adamant of sticking to my own, my one set of tools, which, for the record, it's all in pencil. For those watching, nuts. I mean, Christ, how many pencils do you own? Because the amount of different shades and different colours you'd need for um, just that piece on. alone. Well, I've got um, my main set of tools right here. So for the record, for what I use, it's Derwent. Well, they're called fine art pencils. But on the on the sides of them, they actually say, if I just pull this up to the camera, so it says Derwent Color Soft. And also it, it gives you the, gives you the color of what I, on the side there, really, and what I, what I typically use. Mm. It's like show and tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought I thought it'd be best if I if I actually um if I had my had items here to well because 
people would rather prefer to see it rather than hear me describe it really no no absolutely yeah. always best to have a visual aid so um the next question I've seen pretty much all of your pieces at this point. And, you know, I see the Madame de Pompadour and Colin Baker specifically. And I have to wonder, what's been the trickiest so far? Because they're, <laughs> my goodness. OK, I've got three that I would class as incredibly hard to draw. Mm. Um, so if I've got Madame de Pompadour was hard because of the detail in that dress. That was yeah. so tricky. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. The and the other two are Peter Capaldi one off monsters being the foretold and the Fisher King. Oh, god, yeah, the Fisher King. I that, yeah, wow, <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. That, that was incredible, yeah. Um, I did, I did the Fisher King first, then I did the foretold, and then I did Madame de Pompadour. Um, the, the thing is that I just like setting myself a challenge, really. Mm, I know, absolutely. Um, I mean, is has there been a, a piece you start and then you go, oh god, <laughs> like, oh I regret this. <laughs> um, I normal the majority of the time I do end up uh, scrapping it and starting again. I do because it's a case of okay, I see. Okay, what I tried to do there didn't fully work, so let's re rewind it back a bit. And try again with this. I'm doing something a bit different. I mean, best example I've got is this one right here of my Talons of Wen Chiang picture. Hang on, there's a bit of a glare, so I'll just hold yeah. it to the camera a bit more. So what happened was with, when I started on this is that I, the glow effect I got around the time cabinet that was um, that was actually much greater. It came it came up to around about here. It did really uh, more like a circle. It did, and I looked at it. Uh, at the time and I thought no this just doesn't work so I literally tore the paper up and started again oh god how much work did you rip um well thankfully I I'd only I'd only pretty much done the bottom of that really so mm. it really didn't fully affect it really that's good so I hadn't done any of the top thank, thank goodness for that so um I, I technically only had about Maybe a quarter of it done by the time I, well, maybe a fifth of it actually, by the time I scrapped it. How how much like how many hours would you say that is? Um. Oh gosh. Um. Well, just from just from when I started to when I scrapped it. Yeah. I'd say maybe ten hours. I'd say. Oh. <laughs> oh the thing is, the thing oh, is though, if. Dearie, man. if Again, if I feel like I could I could have done better, I will go ahead and yeah, I'll just think I'll scrap it really if I feel the need, if I if I feel it necessary. Yeah. Um. Here's here's a, a sort of more random question because I, I mean I, I'm one of those people that tried art. You know, I did it for a good while and then I sort of tapered out. And one thing I always struggled with was not necessarily the clothes or or sort of the body. It was always the face. Would you say that's uh -huh. sort of a common hurdle? Oh oh yeah yeah. yeah. Um, I am a stickler for getting getting people's faces right. I will because I re honestly because I know I take my stuff to conventions and I sell them. I want it to look like the person I intend it to look like. Yeah. Um. So I get I get that. It's because again, uh, again I re I just really want to get people's faces correct down, down and correct really. So it's just a case of looking looking at the because um, I've got the image in front of me. I have and I'm looking back back and forth constantly thinking maybe I just need to adjust that a little bit just to get it right maybe rub that back a little bit in fact I've got I've got I've got one golden I've got two golden rules I should mention reg regarding regarding my artwork um the harder something is the more likely I am to enjoy myself and no matter the circumstance whoever your favorite character is they are going to be the hardest <laughs> irregardless of <laughs> Oh god, I can only imagine. I mean, the, I mean, I, I, mine's very amateurish. It's been a hot minute since I've done a drawing, so I mean, kudos mm -hmm. for getting as much as as you have. I mean, how many pieces do you reckon have you done at this point? Goodness me, I must be around. I must be be around, be close to somewhere around about the hundred mark. I'd say. I, I, again, again, I, I, I'm again, unlike digital artists who again i don't know what they're I, again i can't comment on digital art because i don't know what how quickly they're able to 
push stuff out. But it seems like whenever I look on Twitter, there's like p- people who I follow and uh, uh, who are pretty much everyone, who, nearly everyone who I follow are digitalized and they pump it out in in a matter of um, at least, I, I probably see probably see maybe one new picture a week or something. Again, don't know if that's the case for really. you. Whereas I can just about manage a pic- new picture a month, I can really. Blimey, all right, mate. Um, circling back to the, um, uh, the the fandom events, for example, how did you get started doing conventions and selling your artwork or giving away your Well, okay, so I didn't start going to... Uh, the, my first ever convention... I didn't start going to conventions until 2013. Um, so my mum took me along to Big Finish Day 3, which was in March of 2013. And then as an 18th birthday present for me... Uh, I got got to go to the fiftieth, and then pre, and pretty much as I, my mum said to me, only when you're eighteen you can get you can buy your own way and come over to the event. So that's what I did really. Um, so I just started draw, drawing and drawing uh, uh, just just a four pictures of each person I was going to meet really when I went to events, as was shown in that book I just pulled up. Um, Eventually, I did catch the eyes of uh, the Tenth Planet Company and just said, just to have something a bit different. They put my um, at one point they put my artwork out for fans to get signed in front of the um, desks. I wasn't being paid for it, but at the time I really didn't mind really, and and to this day I still didn't mind uh, because again, uh, people kept on saying they really liked my artwork. So yeah, that was fine, but I was very good, very good on my end. Eventually, uh, Tenth Planet close, uh, uh, closes doors to doing signings. They've still got an online shop for the record. Um, so I eventually ventured over to Phantom, who, um, uh, again, shout out to Dex and Paul, by the way, who are the owners of Phantom Events. Um, so from what I remember, it was, um, I first of all started going to the signings and I started get, catching the crew's attention, really, with my artwork and also another item which I typically get signed signed at the event. And um, eventually my mum came along with me. She she became part of the crew at, uh, for crew, crewing for Phantom events. And and then eventually I got asked to be, join, join and become a member of the crew as well. Um, and so afterwards, because uh, be, it was becoming quite common knowledge amongst amongst the crew and Phantom that uh, about my artwork and the fact uh, how common it was. Um, how brilliant it was so it took a bit of convincing to get me to do to get me to do some zenning because i was a bit skeptical about a couple of things such as copyright and whatnot um but i did eventually have my first stall in pandorica of 2019 so just before the pandemic kicked in and that went wrong yeah that went very well for me for my for my first ever event i was i was a uh, essentially, I was essentially a nobody, just trying to flog off bits and pieces of artwork I just done. And I was, and I was sat next to Sophie Arles, who, in, who in and of herself is a fantastic artist. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, but she, she is, she is amazing. She is in terms of, in terms of not only artwork but moral support, support to uh, to any and other people um, around her. So, so, so yeah, um, I do hold Sophie in a high regard for that for that matter uh and eventually eventually spiraled into the fact where um where I then got commissioned by Dex and Paul of Phantom to do some artwork for them so um let me explain what happened so I w- this was in the this is in between uh lockdowns one and two so the, the Phantom of the Phantom Day signings are small enough uh, to the point where they were they, they could happen safely in a COVID environment between pandemics one and two, um, lockdowns one and two. Sorry, um, and we had a I, I was it was the August signing if I remember rightly, and a fan had come up to me because I was on the front table, not selling my prints, but I was selling pictures for for the signing. And he said to me, um, when are you going to draw a picture of Douglas Canfield as the doctor? Because of the brain of Morbius uh, uh, scene. And I, I, I said to him, if I'm, uh, um, um, thank, you for, thank you for speaking to me about that. Um, 
if I'm going to draw Douglas Campbell, I'd rather draw him as, as a director with all the stories that he um, that he's responsible for directing. So, and after he left, it just so happened that Dex was sat next to me when that happened. <laughs> so, so Dex then said to me, how long does it take you to generally draw something? And I said, oh, it entirely depends on what I've got to draw. Because uh, you think about detail, tone, colour, and so on and so forth, really. And we then got talking about other things related to Douglas Campbell. And he said to me, do you want to draw um, a book, draw the the new book co front cover for Douglas for the re-release of Douglas Campbell's biography? And so naturally I said, yes. Well, you would. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Douglas, Douglas Canfield, no offence to any other Doctor Who director, but Douglas Canfield is my favourite director of Doctor Who. So, wow. I've got, so naturally I just jumped, I jumped on that immediately. That's so, awesome. So, so again, I, again, because, of, because I'm obviously very concerned about copyright and whatnot, and they said to me, no, ahead, no it's, go ahead and do it. It's perfectly fine on, you're perfectly fine on copyright grounds because they said that if it, if, it, if it does come to that, they're, they're going to take the brunt. I believe they said they were going to take the brunt of it at the time. Um, or, so, or, something like, or, or, or something along those lines. But essentially, they said I was fine on copyright. And so I just went ahead, looked up all the stories that he was responsible for in terms of directing, and uh, I put together a picture for, uh, for it. And the book was released in January of this year. Yeah, so, I think I remember seeing that. So that I mean that's gotta feel you gotta feel pretty proud about that. Oh yeah, definitely. That is uh I I was I was I was on a high in 2020. I was mm. absolutely I was absolutely enjoying myself in, in that year, despite what happened. Well, yeah, you, I mean you've got to make the most of it, but I suppose when you're doing artwork, going out and about isn't really the biggest worry. No, it was it wasn't. It just a uh, yeah, I will say 2020 just gave me the opportunity to opportunity to a th uh, start thinking about what else i could do and b just get my head down and get some actual artwork done oh, speaking of your fabulous artwork uh perhaps a more standard question but do you have a favorite so far that you've done oh dear i knew i knew i'd get a question like this it was okay it's bound to happen <laughs> oh, okay i will immediately say i refuse to answer that question and i'll explain why do tell um Imagine, right, if you had met, had, let's say, three or more children, and I were to line them up on a wall in front of you, and I were to tell you, yeah. could you pick a favorite for me? And they were, and they were listening very carefully. <laughs> could you answer that question? Could you answer that question? Yeah, I think you've. I think I completely understand your point. And as someone who works in the nursery yeah. and looks after about uh, sixteen odd children, yeah, it's yeah, tricky. I, I, yeah, that's yeah. I essentially view my artwork in this all my artwork in a, in the same light. I do. While mm. I will, I will say, say certain. I will say certain things about cer certain pieces uh, here and there. But I view all of them. I like all of all of the pieces. All of my final pieces as equally as much because. Um, Essentially, they essentially they help me get to where I where I am at the moment, and hopefully push me further beyond the barrier. Oh, absolutely. So you so you consider your artwork your children. You you rest them down into yeah. the pot every night. You give them a little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Brilliant. Right. Um, a couple. Uh, two more questions to go. Uh, if 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 do you ever do commissions from uh, people? Who, I know yours is quite a uh, lot, so it's easier for digital artists, as you say. But perhaps for your yes. style, it would be a bit trickier. Um, I very very rarely take them on because, um, to tell us tell an old story, I used to take art commissions for literally anything. Really, at, at one point, I had people from my place of work saying, "Oh, could you draw? Could you draw this for me? Or could you draw this and this?" And I eventually sat that. Uh, I eventually uh, had a long thought one day. I said to myself, "Am I genuinely happy drawing these bits of artwork?" And the uh, the honest answer was no, because um, my worry was that I was going to put out something that would look shoddy, and I didn't want. And and it, it it's much easier to draw something that you're that you're more passionate about than it is than something you're you're being paid to do. So 
Um, I so while I have take I while I have and occasionally do still take on Doctor Who based artwork commissions, I ve I very rarely do, and I very rarely want to, because it's much easier for me to put something out like this where more people are going to be happy rather than the specific individual will be happy. No, again, no. sorry, if, sorry if there's anyone who wanted a specific piece of artwork from me, but um, but unfortunately, I very rarely advertise the fact. And again, you'd have to catch me in the right in the in, catch me on the right time in order to be able to say, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. No, absolutely. I, I completely understand that. So yeah, community show uh, fan art from Connor Adkins coming soon. <laughs> no, God, no. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I don't want to put your uh, wrist out of action. Just no, oh, that it's too much pencil for the nose, let alone the eyebrows. It would take too long. <laughs> my wrist doesn't hurt actually. The, the, really, the, the only pain, I, the only pain I get from artwork is is, is in my back. Really, it's oh. because I'm con it's because I'm leaning forward. Oh, okay. I am. Yeah, and uh, uh, again, I can't help it. But even though I've got a drawing table, I do have to lean forward sometimes. So it does hurt my back, and on some occasions, my chest. Oh. Your chest, oh, because of the angle, right? Yeah, because of the angle. So I can't help that, but that's a thing, really, with me. No, fair enough. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, doing one of me would take too long. I get the nose. But um, so <laughs> finally, if people were wanting to find your artwork around, if they wanted a piece for yourself, I've said multiple occasions as soon as I get the money that I want that heaven sent one. Uh, <laughs> where would people go to look? At the moment, I'm only selling at events at the moment this is unfortunately a small issue with me is that um again i'm going to use the doctor who story as an example which is nikola tesla's night, night of terrors tesla was a genius but he wasn't a businessman like thomas edison was so he was more, more in it for the science than he was in for the money and I like doing, and while I do sell, I, I'm more art orientated than I am business orientated. Right. So at the moment, I'm only doing events at the moment. So, and in 2022, I've already, I've not, I've not tweeted this out yet or anything, but I'm only planning on doing four events next year. So if you want to get a piece of artwork off of me, the events you would, you would be, be best to catch me at are... Uh, uh, and I'm going to try and, and <laughs> even though I've not spoken to the to the owners about this, I'm going to try and get, get myself to these events. So the events I'm going to be at are Bedford Hoocon, Hooverville, Utopia, and Pandorica. That's all. I, I'm usually quite in the know. I don't think I know those first two. I didn't know the Bedford. Right. I'm going to write so that down. Bedford Charity Hoo all right, So just if you type in Bedford Charity Hoocon on, on into Google, you should find it. You should. Uh, that'll be in April of this year. Hooverville is, uh, well, again, if you just type in Hooverville, but it's a W at the beginning. Oh, yeah. And uh, you sh and it's that's organised by the Doctor Who fan group Hoovers. And uh, and that happens, uh, not, if I remember rightly, the, the, after, after the second, after the bank holiday in August, the one at the okay. end, end of the month of August, again, I don't know. Bank holidays there are in August. <laughs> um, Utopia and Pandorica are events that are hosted by uh, Phantom events themselves. So if you want to know where Utopia is, that's it at Y Boston Lakes in Bedfordshire. And Pandorica is at the Bristol, is at the Future Inn in Bristol. Oh, terrific. I might try and get myself down to those. They sound like yeah. quite, a, quite a hoot. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I believe I believe uh, at the moment only if, if you're interested in meeting some of the guests, uh, only Bedford Hoocon has got some guests announced at the moment. No, fair enough. I uh, the other... have a gander. Yeah. Um, I'd sort of uh, one final question actually that just sort of popped into my head. Um, have you surely you've shown a lot of these artwork to the actual actors in in the show? Yes. Have you got any fun <laughs> stories from that? Like a favorite? Oh, I've had got some fun stories. I had. Mm. I, I was hoping you'd ask me. Uh, right. Um, well, first one, believe it or not, comes from Tom Baker. Believe it or not. <laughs> um, so what? Yeah, I'm going to go with the big guns first of all. <laughs> Let's do it. Um. So what happened was is that. 
this I was still in sick form at the time. This was one of my one of my one a very so a very old picture, which actually three very old pictures of mine. Mm. So let me just find them real quick for you. Open ah, up the, the first two. So these are the first two that, that are regarding, and the other one, which is also my first one in color, believe it or not. Oh, well, one here somewhere. That, that is somewhere. such a thick book. Ah, here it is. Mm. This one right here. Oh, lovely. So what happened was is that I I was the last person in Tom's queue and I went up to him to to give him copies of them and to get them signed. So um, he, he was looking at them, wondering, saying, did you do these? I said, yeah, yes, I did. And um, for the record, my mum was the one who was looking after him for the day. So you know how sometimes you see people sit, sitting next to... Yeah. Um, the guests yeah that's what my mum was doing and she was with Tom for the day <laughs> so yes <laughs> that's a thing that's a claim my mum holds that's a very good claim my mum holds Brilliant. at the moment and so uh, rather than uh, so what Tom says to me is that he first of all he asks for my address so okay, it's like okay, and my mum, being being very much on the more, more on the ball than I was, quickly scribbled down the address, and uh, so it's like okay, that that okay, so maybe something good might come of it. I don't know. So it's a couple of days later. I'm coming home from school after doing my part time cleaning job, mm-hmm. and I look. I so I look on the freezer to see there's a letter from a uh, letter for me. And by the time I register whose handwriting it is, <laughs> I hear upstairs from, from I hear from upstairs my mum and she's yelling, "You bloody bastard!" <laughs> that, so I just thought to myself, oh, I just thought, "Oh gosh, I've managed to annoy my mum so much oh that something's God. happened." And it turns out that the handwriting was Tom Baker's writing, and I've got the letter right here. So I'll just read it to you. So it's dated 1st of June, 2014. So it says, Dear Connor, thank you for the two copies of uh, of my face aged 40 and then 40 years later. <laughs> not just copies, you, not just copies, you catch something special. So, something else, sorry, not special. I have written you, written your name and email on the back of both pictures and I shall send them both out sometime soon and hope they may lead to an inquiry. Best wishes to you and many and more thanks to your mum for looking after me, Tom Baker. Oh my and god. This, this is my this is my prized possession uh, that I own and I absolutely am enthralled by that. That is incredible. Um, um, another so I've got, oh, I've got tons of other stories. Uh, mm-hmm. Another one coming from the other baker, Colin Baker. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so this was a Bedford. I believe it was Bedford Who Con Four. This was the first time that they'd actually managed to get hold of a doctor for their first one, and I was there just as just as an actual punter, just going up and getting what I want, going up meeting the stars and getting what I want, getting what I wanted signed. Yeah, and um, and the first thing of the day, um, before anything else, was Colin Baker's panel, and um, so um, Simon Danes, that was again, I'm just trying to remember his surname, who was hosting the panel, um, didn't really get, have much questions. He just very much let it open to the audience, really. Which again, that's again, again, it's very nice of Simon to do that. So I wanted to ask a question naturally. Uh, for the record, by the time I'd already met Colin, and so I, the question I asked him was, was there any big finish that he would recommend to, to fans to listen? And instead of answering my question, he essentially just stops in the, in the middle and he goes ahead and says, he goes ahead and gives me a shout out to the audience. So <laughs> what happens? He says, he says many artists who draw pitch draw pieces of artwork of of people normally only get it 99% of the time accurate but he said to me that man there gets it 100% of the time accurate so I was like that is that is a massive compliment from (laughs) from Baker 
and um so i just so essentially so essentially essentially he just essentially encouraged people to essentially he then asked what's your twitter handle to, well we're in the middle of the panel and he says um connor j adkins and then he wow. says go and follow that man outstanding i bet if there were any other artists in that room they were like oh this guy this guy <laughs> Made an enemy <laughs> this day. In fact, I've got multiple stories with Colin. Um, uh, the last event before lockdown was Valiant in Sheffield, and this was in March of 2020. So this was just before the pandemic kicked in. Um, and again, Colin, Colin was also there. And I'm, I actually got a stall this time, and I'm sitting in the middle of the room, and behind me is the signing area where, where the autographs are taking place. And to the right of me is the auditorium where the talks are taking place. So Colin had just finished his talk and everyone was bustling out. And then Colin was following shortly behind us, making his way through the crowd to his table. And Colin, in order to get through, he ends up coming past my table. He sees um, sees what's on the table, sees it's me. And then he makes a loud announcement to the, to the, to the crowd saying, everyone, look at this artwork, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and so and he's not done so towards the end of his signing session he's walking out because he's finished for the day he's walking out towards the exit because and he, he asked me how many i've sold and at the time i believe i'd only sold 14 at the time because again not many people were interested which is fair enough and, it, and his reaction was what <laughs> and then he turns to me again and he says, what's wrong with you? Buy this. <laughs> and, and I had to say two times to the, to the crowd saying, I did not pay Colin Baker to say that. <laughs> because people were thinking, because be, I imagine people would have thought, what? So, yeah. So, Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Colin is probably... Colin is, is probably my biggest supporter. Um, it seems like it. It does seem like, like a it. town crier. Hear ye, hear ye. Buy this <laughs> <laughs> Um, what else? So I've, I think I've got, I've got a few other stories. If you, if you, if you've got time to hear them, go for I, it. We've got time for another story. Why not? Um. Okay. Uh, oh, it, it technically involves this one actually. Oh, do tell. Um. So I've got, I've technically got two stories actually. Um. So. It go it, first of all, it comes up when I finish this picture. Um, so for the record, uh, when I scan them, I have to scan them in bits. I do, you know, uh, because I don't have access to an A2 size scanner in high quality. I only have access to an A3 scanner, so it has to be stitched in. It has to be scanned in bits. It does. And shout out to my friend Angus Glenn who helps uh, who helps me put them together because my my knowledge of Photoshop went out of my ear when I finished. Um, when I finished sick form. So he's been very kind enough to help me out and we put this together. So um, so when he sends me the final version of this, um, I then tweet, I, I essentially just decide to, essentially, I want to essentially fire this in all directions on Twitter. This is my, this is my equivalent of firing off a flare gun it is. Mm. So I fire it off to 10 Twitter accounts in general on Twitter, and I get five responses uh, on Twitter. Um, but first of all, I, the, the tweet currently has, it's my pinned tweet on Twitter, has around at least over 250 retweets, well over 1,200 likes, and I couldn't believe it when I saw this, at least over 200,000 people had seen it. So I, that was that was a very, I was, I was like, wow, this, is, this has really done well for me. And the responses I got were from Ray Holman, who was the costume designer for the, for, for the story. Ah. Uh, he, he, didn't say, he didn't say anything. He just indicated his approval by liking it, which, again, really happy with that. Mm. Uh, both the Doc2 Twitter accounts responded to me. So that's the, the official one and the American one. Nice. Responded to me. Nice. And, and also I noticed that the... The official Doctor Who Twitter account every tweeted it, and the last thing that they re- that they tweeted out was in relation to se- season series thirteen promotional material. So, and that was about a fortnight ago. Good timing. <laughs> so, so I just thought, so, yeah, this is this is 
yeah, I've got, got this in front of more people now, so <laughs> let me wear out. And the American one, I, I responded, and both of them had quoted the, the infamous gif of Peter Capaldi saying, modern art. <laughs> <laughs> they said, yeah. Um, Brilliant. Um, uh, the th- fourth person that I got response from was from Kate Walsh, who was the prosthetics producer who, who works for Millennium FX and absolutely loved it as well. Very happy. Uh, so essentially got, got high approval there but the best response i got on twitter was from rachel talalay who was the director uh, of the film. yeah and she um was absolutely blown away by this thing and i i actually quite I, because people have been liking because i, I put progress suites of my artwork throughout on to, anytime i get a bit further on, on a picture and she could, and I actually had to say it, say in my tweet, uh, please see the finished piece of artwork that I've done in pencil. And when she read, saw that, she thought she was absolutely run away, but and she couldn't believe that it was done in pencil. Ah. And the be- and the best thing about it is that she now follows me on Twitter. So nice, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he and even though I didn't, because I never got, he never saw it on Twitter. But I got to show him in person. Jamie Reed Quarrel, who plays, you can't see on camera, huh. who plays the veil as, nice. a, as seen this in real life, as real life himself. And I did give him a copy of it. And he, because he'd signed a few on, on the day that I that he was signing autographs, and he was absolutely blown away by what I'd done. And uh, I like I like I like to tweeted a picture of me and him with uh, the artwork saying, and I ended up quote ended up saying Jamie Rude Quarrel, Quarrel approves. So, <laughs> so, that, so yeah, that's, that, that, that did me very well. This picture's done me very well. No, absolutely it has. I mean, I, I, can, only ima- I can only imagine what amazing pieces you'll be able to do in the future because if your yeah. previous works have shown anything, it's absolute quality. As Colin Baker said, 100% right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the biggest Thank review you. ever you could ever get. Yeah, I, ended up, I even ended up with a, with a, a believe it or not a piece of Doctor Who television because of, because of my artwork at one point. Really? I'm not kidding. I've not told this story because, but I'll tell it now. Um, so it was an, it was another Phantom Day signing, and an actor called Richard Seeger was there. So if you don't know who he is, he played a Vok robot in Robots of Death. Okay. And at the at the time he had he had with him his original script and all the rehearsal schedule that was with it. So uh, I'd done a picture of Robots of Death um, a number of years ago prior to meeting him. So I rocked up and I just uh, I wanted to give him a copy as per usual. He loved it and he then he, said, he then said to me in return, um, like he was he was rifling through the script. He's like. Do you want this? And what he handed me was the, an original copy of the rehearsal schedule for Robots of Death. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's I don't, brilliant. I, I don't, but it happened. I was like, oh my god! I thought to myself, oh my gosh, that has never happened. So yeah, I, I was like, I was jumping, and it was even better because I know I knew how my mum would react because Robots <laughs> of Death is my mum. Is my mum's all-time favourite Doctor Who story. Well, that's gone well then, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. <laughs> so I told her what happened. Um, she was the only person I told, and I told her what happened. And she, and when she, and once I finished talking to her, face just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Did she yeah. know you bastard again? <laughs> Oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> she did not. She did not yell. She just. She just fell quiet. <laughs> Oh my god, that is terrific! <laughs> the audience, forgive me if I'm making you jealous or anything like that, but this is stuff that's just happening out of my control. Yeah, I mean, look, you you put your stuff out there, you hope for the best, and sometimes you luck out. That's, I think, that's what the moral of the story. <laughs> in my case, in in my case, I'm extremely lucking out. Absolutely. Well, yes. uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, Connor. It, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting away to you. Oh, thank you as well, Jack. And again, um, again, for the record, this is being recorded after uh, after Pandorica 2021. 
and is and you've you've already tweeted out the um your your poll for best uh actor or yeah, audio yeah, drama yeah. or artist or whatever. Um again, uh I'm not voting because technically I am eligible for what for one of them I am, so I'm gonna keep myself out of that. But yeah, uh good luck to all of the Oxford community. Very well done for the year. You've made 2021 a much more bearable time. Oh, that's terrific. That's everyone, everyone in the community. Uh, yeah, t- uh, thank you. Uh, good enough reason. Thank you. And now the robot lady is going to tell us that it has...